Hi guys, I am just sitting down to film a quickie get ready with me. I'm actually getting ready to go out to lunch with Gabby for her birthday. Um, she just turned 30 last week, so happy birthday, Gabby. Um, but I just thought I have a few new makeup pieces in, some new releases, some not new releases, but things that are new to me. Um, so I just thought I'd get ready with you. I have the new Auric um, Plush Ritual Recovery Lip Treatment, and it is so nice. I don't know if you guys have seen this, but it's like a squeezy tube of like a liquid lip balm. And the applicator is so interesting because the hole where the product comes out is on this side, and then you can like work it into the lip with the metal side, or you can just apply it where it comes out. So I've been really enjoying this. It um, has ceramides in it. My lips have been super chaffed lately, and it's just been really nice for giving me that like sort of healing coat over my lips. It adds shine, as you can tell. It's also fragrance free. So there have been times where, do you ever get your lips so chapped where you put anything on and it stings? My lips were like that, but I could apply this and it's been really healing. Okay, moving on to base, I am finally trying the Fenty Ease Drop Stick, their uh, Ease Drop Stick Blur and Smooth Tint Stick Foundation. Um, I have this shade five, which I think is a really good match for me. I have been using the shade six in the Fenty Regular Ease Drop Liquid, but I actually think five is a better match. I haven't tried this on the face yet, but they did just send this over to me in a PR package and I've just been so curious, so I can't wait to try it. I know they say you can just swipe it on and blend out with a brush. So that's what I'm gonna do. I have my Beauty Pie foundation brush and um, I have my regular skincare down. Didn't use anything new today because I did want to test this out. So I'm just gonna do half of my face. And I know this is a real light coverage product. I've heard really good things about this. It's interesting because it has a lot of slip to it. Like when I swiped it on my face, it went on with so much glide. And even now it's blending out really nicely. For me, that's one of the things I don't like about a lot of stick foundations. They don't have glide or it feels like they kind of just, the product sits where you apply it. But this is blending out really nicely. My skin looks so smooth, whoa. I didn't apply any primer, I was thinking about it, but I figured we should just see how this does on its own. Okay, my skin looks so smooth. There's no um, pilling or anything texturally weird happening. And I, I guess I'm not surprised that it's filling in the pores in my T-zone because I've heard that it's really good at that, but it actually feels really lightweight. A lot of times, because stick foundations have a lot of butters and oils in them, they can feel heavy on the skin, but this actually doesn't feel like I have anything on. Then I just wanna see how it does around the corners of my face, like around the nose. Wow, it takes like no effort to blend in. I'm excited I get to test this because I have obviously been prepping all of my updated Sephora recommendations for the Sephora sale. I just placed a big order with Prada Beauty. I ordered the Prada foundation, a Prada lipstick, um, some of the new house labs, blushes and glosses, a couple other things. So this was definitely on my list to try and I really like that. Okay, so this is half my face done. I love the way it looks. It feels like I have nothing on. It actually looks like I have nothing on, but texturally my skin looks super smooth. And it also looks like it's evened out a lot of redness without adding too much coverage. So here's the side with, and here's the side without. I'm just gonna buff that out. I feel like this is actually the perfect brush or a brush like this, something dense but soft. It's like the perfect brush to go with this product. It's like such a fast application too. It's truly taking no effort. I feel like this shade is such a good match for me right now. I do feel like it might be a little bit light in the summertime, but right now it's a really good match. Okay, I love that. That was so easy. It's actually more matte than I was expecting, the finish, and I'm wondering if it's going to get glowier throughout the day, which is normal for me because I do have oily combo skin. 
Um, but I will definitely report back in a pinned comment and let you know. I do wanna add some glow to the skin and I've actually been wanting to try this over makeup. So this is the In Beauty Project Face Glaze Bronze. It's actually the bronze version of their original face glaze, which is one of my favorite primers for adding pearliness to the skin. It just makes the skin look really smooth. And I actually was going to use it under the stick today, but I'm glad I didn't so I could see the stick on its own. Um, the bronze does, however, only come in one shade. I've used it one time under makeup, but I haven't used it over makeup. And it looks really warm when you first apply it. It comes out like this, it's like a gel. Um, but it blended out really nicely. I just haven't tried it over foundation yet. And let me show you what it looks like next to the original face glaze, just so you can compare. So the original face glaze has, like I mentioned, a pearliness, but it has this really beautiful champagne glow and the tint actually is not very visible at all. This is kind of a big drop of the, the bronze, so I'm gonna sort of sheer it out so you can see realistically what it looks like on the skin. It is warm, but you kind of apply this, I mean, this is their answer to like drunk elephant, debronzy, any sort of bronzing drops. So you're, you're going to sheer it out a lot, basically. It's not going to look that orange because you're applying it in a super, super thin layer. I'm going to pick it up with a brush. This is a Sephora 56, one of my favorite brushes. It's a foundation brush, but it's pinched like that. And I'm actually just going to like paint it on, sort of sweep it where I would bronzer. I'm using it as like a liquid bronzer. And they do say you can use it that way. You can apply it directly to the skin, but I'm just going to add some glow and bronze like kind of selectively, I think. And you know, when you squeeze it out, the gel is, it's not dense, but like it holds its shape, but it actually spreads out really nicely and you can get a really thin application of it, which I like. I'm actually liking this this way applied more so than um, the way I applied it the first time, which was that I just swiped it on with fingers. I feel like I'm getting a really even glow this way and it looks more natural because I'm able to sheer it out more without having to smear it around my face. Okay, I really like that. The thing I actually love about the combination of the Eavesdrop stick and this bronzer is that I feel like I have basically no makeup on my face. It's a super thin application of both. And I feel like actually there is some glow that comes with the face face glaze bronze, but it's not um, quite as pearly as the original face glaze. So it looks sun-kissed, but it looks like you're just sun-kissed on really hydrated skin. But it's not glossy and it's not sparkly at all. Obviously the drawback to this is that there's only one shade. It's not going to be a bronzer on everybody. If you have a deeper skin tone, I do think this is going to be like a gorgeous highlight the way that face glaze is for lighter skin tones. But um, I do kind of like the addition to the line and I hope we see more shades of this. Okay, I just remembered I totally forgot to apply concealer. So I don't have a new concealer. I'm just gonna go in with my Makeup by Mario um, Surreal Skin Awakening Concealer in the shade 240. And I feel like because we're going for a really natural look today, I don't want to apply too much concealer. I'm just gonna keep it really fresh and focused around my eyes. I'm just taking a fluffy synthetic brush and I'm just going to, it's actually an eyeshadow brush and I'm just gonna whisk that around. This is what I do when I want a really light concealer application. I apply it with a fluffy brush rather than like a dense concealer brush. And I'm just taking that brush and I'm blending the foundation around my nose. I'm definitely noticing in my 30s, like the crevice around my nose is where um, most foundation brushes that are bigger like this one don't really reach. So actually taking a fluffy eyeshadow brush and blending out that area has been really helping me to prevent um, creasing throughout the day. I think I'm gonna move on to eyes real quick because I don't quite know color-wise what I'm gonna do yet, so I'm gonna do blush last, I think. Just priming my eyes real quick using the Primer Potion from Urban Decay, a classic. 
And I am actually using some new stuff from Urban Decay today, which I feel like I don't get to say that very often. The main thing I'm super excited to use is the Urban Decay Moon Dust um, Glitter Eyeliner. So I think these came out around holiday and I was actually gifted these at, not an Urban Decay event, at a Laneige event, but Urban Decay was there. It was the Laneige event for their new um, sleeping mask, their new bouncy and firm sleeping mask. It's super cute. I have only used it a couple times, but I do like it. I'll give you a follow-up review of that soon. But they had a little Urban Decay booth there and they were giving out some of their new shades of their Moon Dust products. So over holiday, I think they also added new Moon Dust shades. I'm sure you guys all know Space Cowboy. That's their most like well-known one. Um, this one is one of their new shades. It's called Cosmic Craze and it has this peachiness to it and it has these like peachy red flecks. Let me swatch it for you. So this is what it looks like, really pretty. And when you blend it out, it does become more peachy rather than um, red. And then I don't think this is a new shade, but they also gave me Cosmic, which is just a white glitter. It's almost like just a white topper. Looks like that, but it's really beautiful for a wet looking eyelid. And then I have Space Cowboy here, which I will swatch next to it just for comparison. So um, here is Space Cowboy, which is almost like a combination of these two. It has that champagne, warmer, peachy undertone, especially compared to this, which looks pretty icy next to it. And then I have the Space Cowboy liner. So this is super fun. It's like, a liquid liner with glitter in it. And let me swatch it um, next to Space Cowboy. So there's this Space Cowboy eyeliner and it does have like chunky glitter in there, but you can see you can apply a much more concentrated amount of glitter and control where it goes. Whereas these give you a much more diffused, scattered shimmery effect. I'm just gonna take my Patrick Ta Major Dimension 3 and just lightly kind of sculpt the eyes a little bit using some of the lighter matte shades. This is the matte palette that's been sitting on my vanity lately and it's been great. I just reach for it when I have like something like this, a single shadow, but I maybe want a little bit of a base underneath and I'm using my BK Beauty um, 212 just to add some depth and dimension to my eyes before going in with glitter. I think I'm gonna go straight in with the eyeliner and create a slight wing shape. I'm gonna see how it goes. It is my first time using this, so I'm gonna see how application goes. The thing about a glitter liner like this is that you do need to keep like dipping back into the tube to pick up product because it's really a delivery system for the glitter. So that was one dip, got me like halfway across, and then another dip. And it is a scattered look, but I find that if you lay the brush on its side, you get more glitter deposited. Then you can get more of an opaque line across. And then just repeating on this side. Also, if you're like me and you have hooded eyes where, you know, if you have a metallic on your lid or glitter, it will transfer if you open your eyes all the way. This is nice because like I mentioned, it gives you that controlled application and once it dries down, it's not transferring onto my upper lids. So if you want a more like targeted application of glitter, it's really nice for that. I'm kind of liking the eye where it is. I might just add a touch of this cosmic shade, which is that silvery pearl in the inner corner. Not a big application or anything like that, but just a little bit of twinkle. And I'm using just a really small Real Techniques um, smudger brush right now. If you apply a lot of this, it does get a little bit icy, so I'm sort of shearing it out. And then I have a new tubing mascara. It's the Clio Kill Lash, but I realized they added a version to this line. It's the Super Proof Mascara Extreme Volume. I think there's a number for it, I'll link it below, but they have several different versions of this, but this is a tubing one, which is super exciting. I have used it once and I liked it, but it didn't hold a curl super well. So I am going to experiment today with one side with the primer and one side without. This always holds a curl for me, um, but I do wanna show you the difference. 
I grabbed this and then I also grabbed the Hamish Smudge Stop uh, Dialism Mascara. So I haven't tested that one yet. And then unrelated, but I did pick up the Judy Doll uh, Curling Iron Mascara to see if it compares to my Surratt Mascara. So those are all the mascaras I'm testing right now that are sort of like in review. This is the wand for the mascara, by the way. It's thick and it has an hourglass shape, but it also has really defined ridges between the bristles. So um, I'm going to apply this side without primer. And full disclosure, this side is my bad lash side right now. You know, you have a good lash side and a bad lash side. I like that this is really black, like all of the other Kill Lash mascaras. Um, but unlike the other Kill Lash mascaras, this makes it really easy to remove. The other Kill Lash mascaras are amazing, but if you've ever tried them, you know they're really difficult to remove. They take quite a bit of work, and you for sure need a balm cleanser. This one does come off like a tubing mascara. It's super easy, and it doesn't smudge throughout the day. Typically, when I see a brush this large, I get a little bit scared because it means it might be hard to apply or it might over apply product at once. But I think you even saw when I showed you the brush close up, it doesn't pick up too much product. And I think that's because there's so much space between each of the bristles that you can really like blink through the wand and you get length and separation and flutteriness and then you can build volume as well it's also not too wet of a formula which i love that's what i mentioned i love about like rudy's uh chocolate drip tubing mascara that i mentioned in my last trying new makeup video i like when tubing mascaras are on the drier side so this doesn't completely drop a curl but it doesn't sit completely up the way that I generally like my lashes to, especially when you're not working with a lot of lash length naturally. But um, it mostly drops in the inner corner. I find that the outer corner does stay lifted. So then this side I am going to prime and I just opened a fresh tube of my mascara fixer so I know my lashes are gonna stay lifted. And when I use this with tubing mascaras, I do like to go in with the mascara when, before it dries down, before the primer dries down. I just find I get the best application that way. So here's the side with primer, and this is the side without. It does make a big difference, at least for me, that I can tell in person. Um, this just gives me a lot more lift. But I do like it even without the primer. It's just a me thing because my lashes are so, so stubborn and straight. But I am a big fan of this so far. In addition to the mascaras, I also hauled um, a couple of the new Roman D Glasting Melting Balm shades. You guys know I love the one that I have. I just have one shade, it's called Kaya Fig, and it's probably one of my most worn lip colors or lip products of the last six months. Um, so I'm really excited to have a couple of other shades. I grabbed the shade number 12, Veiled Rose, and I also grabbed 13, Scotch Nude. So let me swatch these for you real quick. So this is what they look like. It's like a tinted, melty, thick balm that coats your lips. It gives you a lot of moisture. So that is number 12, Veiled Rose. And there is 13, Scotch Nude, which has more of a caramely undertone. Let me actually grab Kaya Fig so I can compare it for you guys. The thing I love about this formula is that I can wear it on its own really comfortably and it is also moisturizing over time. So that's 12 Veiled Rose, 13 Scotch Nude, and six Kaya Fig. Here's what they look like. They also do have this like juicy um, K-beauty scent. It's almost like Korean candy. It's an artificial scent, but it also makes my mouth water. I really like it. I definitely prefer it to minty lip scents. So let me try on um, number 12, Veiled Rose first. This one has a slightly um, cooler undertone, a true neutral rose. It almost brings out the blue tones in my lips a little bit more, but I like that. I feel like it adds um, a slight smokiness compared to the other shade that I have, Kaya Fig. Let me go in with Scotch Nude. Yeah. 
You know, I was expecting this to be a little bit more of like a camel leaning nude, but I feel like on me, there are more red undertones, which I really like. It's still very much a rosy nude, but it's a little bit warmer than Veiled Rose. And then actually I'll show you Kaya Fig so you can compare. Kaya Fig is much more pink on my lips. So this is Kaya Fig, it's more pink for sure. It's like a cooler pink and it pops a little bit more versus the other ones having a little bit more earthiness to them. Um, but I feel like today I might go in with Scotch Nude. So let me put that back on. The nice thing about these is like, this is one layer and it's very sheer and then you can build up the pigment for sure and you can create a more blurred lip line or you can go for something more defined with a lip liner too. They're just really easy to use and I feel like because they have that body, that grippiness to them, they actually stay on, especially for a tinted balm sort of product. For blush, I'm gonna go in with an oldie but a goodie. I don't have a new blush to share and this is just what I feel like wearing. Um, this is the Makeup by Mario uh, Soft Pop Plumping Blush Veil in Barely Blushing. If you can't tell, I really, really love it. And I like this one because it kind of goes with everything. I also love this blush brush. This is the Half Magic Beauty Kitten Paw Brush, I think they call it. And it's amazing for applying cream blush. So I just like this one because I can apply it really, really generously. And I feel like it goes nicely with the lip that I have on. And I just stamp it on. It's the nice thing about this brush too. It kind of does all of the blending work for me. And then I will powder just a touch. I've really been liking the Mob Beauty powder, which I tried in my last uh, new makeup video. It's just really good at blurring and diffusing. So I'm just going to set around the nose pretty much and maybe a little bit under the eyes, around the chin, T-zone only basically. Okay, that's the makeup. Let's review real quick. If you can't tell, I'm super into this. I'm actually really excited because I can tell right away with a base product, usually whether I like it or not, but I will report back on how it wears. I can wear it for probably more than eight hours today. So look for that pinned comment. That's where, oh, one of my lights just went out. That's fine. <laughs> that's where I like to do my reviews. Oh, both of my lights just went out. That's fine. Um, in terms of the face glaze bronze, I actually really liked this a lot better applied with a brush than the way I applied it the other day with just fingers kind of smearing everywhere. I really enjoyed the controlled application that I got with the brush and that I could get a super thin layer of it. In terms of the um, Moon Dust liquid liner, I'm a big fan of this. I like glitter in this delivery system. I'll let you know whether I have any fallout throughout the day, but I don't have any glitter under my cheeks or on my cheeks so far, so I'm feeling pretty optimistic. And then in terms of the Clio mascara, I will let you know um, how the side with the primer wears versus without. This is my second time wearing this, first time with the primer. So I'll let you know about whether the curl drops throughout the day on the side, what the removal process is like, but for those of you who love Clio mascaras, but don't love the removal. I feel like this is a really good addition to the line. And then in terms of the Glasting lip balms, I already know I love this formula. I already know these shades are going to live in my bag. Um, so I can already tell you that I, I do really love them and I'm a big fan of this shade. I feel like the longer I'm wearing it, the more purpley it's starting to look. But the thing about these is that in shadow, they look deeper and then in natural light, they look more sheer because of that like jelly light like translucency, but if you want something with pigment that is grippy, that sticks onto the lips, that's moisturizing, that lasts over time, I feel like you should try these. And they're also like under $10. I feel like they're like seven or $8. So I will link everything below, of course. If it was your first time here, then I hope you enjoyed and I hope you'll come back and look for that pinned comment and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.